In a world where elemental magic and powerful spirits reign supreme, Kamito Kazahaya stands out as the only irregular male elementalist. This unique ability makes him a sought-after figure, and his life takes an unexpected turn when he's summoned to the prestigious Arishia Spirit Academy by Greyworth Seal May. The story then takes a flashback to a significant event from three years ago. Ren Ashbell, a legendary figure, defeated Velsaria Ava Ferengart in the Blade Dance competition. Among the spectators were Ellis Ferengart, Fiona Ray Ordesia, Claire Rouge, and Rinslet Laurenfrost, who will all play important roles in Kamido's journey. Back in the present, Kamido's misadventures continue as he stumbles upon Claire in the spring. Kamido, in an attempt to avoid Claire's anger, ends up inadvertently making her even more furious. After a brief skirmish involving Claire's whip-like elemental Wafi, Kamido saves her from danger, but not without accidentally touching her chest. This results in Claire placing a whip collar around Kamido's neck, ensuring his cooperation. Kamido and Claire later discuss their situations and Kamido's admission to Arishia Spirit Academy. Claire reveals her mission to seal a contract with a sealed spirit residing in a shrine. However, their attempt goes awry when the spirit goes wild, and Kamido must step in to protect Claire. In a desperate bid to save her, Kamido forms a contract with the frenzied spirit, becoming her contracted spirit. As they leave the shrine and head to the academy together, Kamido and Claire's journey as partners in elemental magic begins. Kamido's arrival at the academy is met with mixed reactions. He crosses paths with Ellis, who initially corners him, but Greyworth intervenes, arranging for Ellis to give Kamido a tour of the academy and his new living quarters. Along the way, Kamido playfully teases Claire but gets reprimanded by the Raven class teacher Freya. In Raven class, Kamido meets Rinslet and her maid Carol, leading to another encounter and discussion about his unique status as Claire's contracted spirit. The story takes a mysterious turn when Greyworth informs Kamido that Ren Ashbell has returned and has brought with her a dark elemental spirit. He believes that Kamido is the only one who can stop Ren Ashbell. Bell and asks for his cooperation in the upcoming Blade Dance competition, which is just two months away. As the episode ends, a smiling Restia is seen landing on the roof of Aratia Spirit Academy, hinting at more intriguing developments to come. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the Aratia Spirit Academy's sprawling campus. Kamito Kazahaya, the only male student in this prestigious institution, had just settled into his modest lodging, a small shack nestled beside the Academy's stables. The wooden structure had a rustic charm, and its proximity to the stables meant Kamido could often hear the soft whinnies and rustling of the Academy's prized elemental horses. However, his first day at the Academy had not gone as planned. With his stomach growling and a day of rigorous training behind him, Kamido had ventured into the school's cafeteria, only to be met with shockingly high prices for meals. He spent his time organizing his meager belongings and reflecting on the day's events. However, his solitude was abruptly interrupted by a gentle knock on the rickety wooden door. Startled, Kamido opened it to find Rinslet Laurenfrost, a student from the prestigious Raven class, standing there with a tray of soup. Her piercing blue eyes held a glint of determination as she made an offer that would change Kamido's life. In exchange for a bowl of nourishing soup, she requested that Kamido become her servant. Just as they began discussing this intriguing proposition, the scene took an unexpected turn. Claire Rouge, a fiery and determined classmate, burst onto the scene like a whirlwind. With her crimson hair and a spirit as fierce as her elemental Wafi Scarlet, she challenged Rinslet's claim on Kamido's allegiance. What followed was a verbal battle of wits, with Claire and Rinslet exchanging fiery retorts and challenging one another's authority over Kamito. The confrontation escalated, and the latent power of their spirits, Scarlet and Fenrir, came to the fore. Their elemental energies clashed, causing the very ground beneath them to tremble. Kamido watched in amazement and disbelief as the duel of words turned into a spectacular clash of spirits. The wooden shack that had been his abode bore the brunt of the elemental showdown. The combined might of Scarlet's flames and Fenrir's icy fury caused the shack to crumble into a pile of timber and debris. The resounding noise of the shack's destruction drew the attention of Ellis Ferengart, the captain of the Sylphid Knights, and her two loyal companions. Ellis, known for her aristocratic demeanor and razor-sharp wit, couldn't resist injecting her brand of disdain into the situation. She saw the chaos before her as an opportunity for resolution. With an air of authority, Ellis proposed a duel, a three-versus-three showdown to settle the dispute. The stakes were high, and Kamido, despite being a bystander, was roped into participating. The stage was set for an upcoming battle that would test their mettle as elementals and the bonds they would form in the crucible of combat. As the dust settled from the destruction of his former lodging, Kamido found himself at the mercy of Claire, who graciously offered him shelter in her room. The evening took a surreal turn as Kamido and Scarlet set about clearing Claire's room while she prepared to take a shower. However, 
Tranquility quickly turned to turmoil when the water spirit within Claire's bathroom went berserk. Jets of water sprayed wildly, and torrents cascaded from the shower head. Panicked and drenched, Claire fled from the bathroom in disarray. Kamido sprang into action, summoning his inner strength to calm the unruly water spirit. With a calming touch and a soothing voice, he quelled the watery chaos. His control over spirits had never been more evident. Following the incident, Kamido and Claire sat down for dinner. Over a meal that bore traces of both laughter and chaos, Claire shared more about her true identity and her heartfelt quest for a stronger spirit. Claire led Kamido to the fabled Astral Gate, a mystical portal with the power to transport them to Astral Zero a realm steeped in mystery and danger. With trepidation and anticipation, they stepped into the gateway, their surroundings shifting as they were transported to a place beyond the realm of the ordinary. It was a realm of ethereal landscapes and enigmatic beauty, and it held the promise of both wonder and peril. Their presence in Astral Zero would set into motion a series of events that would change their lives forever. Soon, they would encounter Rinslet and her loyal maid, Carol, and the stage would be set for the long-anticipated duel that had been proposed by Ellis. As the duel unfolded amidst the surreal backdrop of Astral Zero, Kamido found himself facing off against formidable adversaries. But amid battle, his keen instincts detected an ominous presence, a shadow that loomed overhead. With urgency in his voice, he pleaded for the duel to cease, sensing the arrival of something far more powerful and malevolent. And then, from the very heavens themselves, a colossal demon spirit descended. Restia Ashdal, a figure from Kamido's mysterious past, had summoned this formidable entity with a singular purpose, to awaken Kamido. The battlefield became a stage for a clash of spirits, a test of courage, and a battle that would shape the destiny of Kamido Kazahaya, the lone male elementalist in the Arishia Spirit Academy. As the demon spirit's shadow engulfed them all, Kamido knew that the real battle had only just begun, and he would have to confront not only the darkness that threatened him, but also the secrets that lay hidden within his past. In the aftermath of the intense battle, the academy grounds were left in shambles. The clash with the demon spirit revealed Kamito's incredible power and prowess as a blade dancer. However, it had also taken a toll on him, leaving him physically and mentally drained. Claire, too, was deeply affected by the loss of her loyal spirit, Scarlet. The emotional scars ran deep, and it was clear that her path ahead would be filled with challenges. Kamito's unconscious state didn't last long, and he soon began to stir. His first moments of consciousness were met with a throbbing headache and a sense of exhaustion that seemed insurmountable. Slowly, he pushed himself upright, taking in his surroundings. He found himself in a room bathed in soft, warm light. There, standing in the room, was a girl with striking emerald eyes and long, flowing silver hair. She was clad in a white dress and her ethereal appearance seemed almost otherworldly. The girl introduced herself as Est and referred to Kamito as her master. Kamito, feeling slightly bewildered by the situation, politely requested that she use his name without honorifics. Their playful exchange continued as Est attempted to find the perfect way to address him. Eventually, they settled on the simple use of Kamito's name. Just as Kamito and Est were getting acquainted, the tranquility of the moment was shattered by an unexpected intrusion. The door to the room swung open and in walked Rinslet Lorenfrost, accompanied by her loyal maid, Carol Nastasia. The sight that greeted them was nothing short of shocking. Kamito, sitting on the bed, with a seemingly naked girl in knee-high socks beside him. Rinslet's cheeks flushed with jealousy, as she demanded an explanation for the perplexing scene before her. Kamito attempted to provide a reasonable explanation, but his efforts were in vain. Rinslet, unable to contain her frustration, launched an attack against him, forcing Kamito to defend himself. It was in this chaotic moment that Est revealed her true identity. She was the Sword Spirit, Demon Slayer a powerful and enigmatic spirit with a history shrouded in mystery. Her intervention not only halted Rinslet's attack, but also showcased her formidable combat abilities. With the situation diffused, Kamido, Est, and Rinslet engaged in a conversation to clear up any misunderstandings. Rinslet's curiosity led her to inquire about Est's origin and her contract with Kamido. Est's story of being a sealed sword and her decision to contract with Kamido was a tale filled with intrigue and emotional depth. As the night wore on, Kamido and Est decided to explore the academy grounds together. Est shared more about her experiences as a sealed spirit and her longing to become stronger. Their bond continued to deepen as they walked through the moonlit campus, and Kamido couldn't help but feel a growing connection to this mysterious girl. Meanwhile, Ellis Farangart, the captain of the Sylphid Knights, received word of the events that had transpired. Despite her initial reservations about Kamito, she found herself drawn to the enigmatic elementalist, 
She sought him out to discuss the recent battle, and perhaps gain a better understanding of the complexities surrounding him. Elsewhere in the academy, Claire Rouge wandered through the town in a state of emotional turmoil. The loss of Scarlet weighed heavily on her heart, and she struggled to find a sense of purpose without her loyal spirit. It was during this vulnerable moment that she encountered a cloaked figure who would soon reveal herself as Restia Ashdall. Restia's arrival was both unexpected and fateful. She extended an offer to Claire the chance to form a contract with a berserk spirit. Claire, grappling with her grief and anger, accepted the offer, setting into motion a series of events that would have far-reaching consequences. Ellis Ferengart's announcement about the upcoming contract ceremony and blade dance rings in Kamido Kazahaya's head as he runs to look for Claire. It was a day that he had been dreading for one particular reason. Claire Rouge, Kamito and Est, his loyal sword spirit, hurriedly made their way to meet Claire. He knew that he had to prevent her from doing anything rash during the upcoming blade dance. As they sprinted through the academy grounds, Kamito's thoughts raced. As he ran, he couldn't help but reflect on Claire's character. She may have presented herself as abrasive and prideful, but deep down, Kamito had seen glimpses of the goodness that lay within her. He knew that Claire harbored a burning desire to confront her past and seek answers about her sister, Rubia Elstein, the infamous Calamity Queen. Four years ago, Rubia had betrayed the Fire Spirit King by stealing a Fire Spirit. However, as Kamito's thoughts swirled, he couldn't shake off the sense of impending danger. Claire had already joined the Blade Dance, and the battle was underway. Kamito's pace quickened, knowing that every moment counted. At the arena, Claire was locked in a fierce confrontation with a formidable spirit. Her opponents taunted her mercilessly, comparing her to her infamous sister, and mocking her inability to fight without her contract spirit, Scarlet. Claire's frustration reached its peak, and the turmoil within her gave rise to a surge of dark emotions. It was then that she unleashed the contract spirit bestowed upon her by Restia Ashdall. The atmosphere in the arena shifted dramatically as dark energy crackled around her. Kamido and Est arrived at the arena just in time to witness the tumultuous transformation. The spirit Claire had summoned took on a menacing form, that of a frenzy hellcat. It was a creature that devoured divine power and thrived on chaos. In its dark dragon form, it possessed other contract spirits in the arena, compelling them to turn against their masters. Est, with her vast knowledge of spirits, explained the dire situation to Kamido. The frenzy hellcat was a malevolent force, driving its victims to fight until they could exist no more. Fortunately, the hellcat hadn't fully manifested yet, leaving a slim window of opportunity to stop its rampage. With determination etched on his face, Kamido turned to Est and made a resolute request. He asked her to become his sword once more, knowing that their combined strength was their best chance at quelling the chaos. Est hesitated for a moment but ultimately agreed, placing her trust in Kamido's abilities. As they charged into the chaos of the arena, Kamido charged forward, determination etched on his face as he made his way to Claire. Amidst the chaos, Kamido implored Claire to take a moment and truly consider whether this dark power was what she truly desired. His words were met with an angry outburst as Claire yelled at him to shut up. But Kamido, undeterred, knew that he had to reach out to her, to break through the walls she had built around herself. As Claire's anger resounded in the arena, a vivid flashback overtook her consciousness. She saw two figures, bound together by chains around their necks. Their eyes, filled with pain and longing, stared at her from a distance. It was a haunting vision that sent shivers down her spine. Returning to the present, Claire's voice quivered as she confessed to Kamido that he couldn't possibly understand the depths of her loneliness. Her past, her legacy as the sister of the Calamity Queen, had left her isolated and burdened with a heavy sense of responsibility. Kamito, with unwavering resolve, corrected Claire's perception. He told her that she wasn't alone because he would always be by her side, supporting her through thick and thin. Claire's frustration and anger surged, and she lashed out with her whip, expecting Kamito to dodge it as he had done before. To her astonishment, Kamito didn't evade the attack this time. He allowed the whip to strike him, a pained expression crossing his face. Drawing closer to Claire, Kamido tenderly petted her head, his voice filled with genuine affection. He expressed his love for her fiery spirit, the very essence of what made her unique. Amid their connection, the frenzy Hellcat launched a sneak attack from behind, but Kamido reacted in the nick of time. He halted the Hellcat's advance, calling it by a familiar name, Scarlet. It was then that the shocking truth was unveiled. The power bestowed upon Claire by Restia was not a benevolent one, but a dark force that twisted Scarlet into a demon. With resolve burning in her eyes, Claire summoned a blazing fireball, targeting the seal on her hand. The explosion of flames was a declaration of her determination to break free from the dark influence that had ensnared her and her beloved spirit. Seizing the opportunity created by Claire's attack, Kamido sprang into action. His determination to free Claire and Scarlet from the clutches of darkness gave him the strength he needed. With a swift and decisive strike, he defeated the demon that had taken possession of Scarlet. As the demonic entity crumbled away, Claire gazed upon her beloved spirit one last time. 
Kamido's heart raced with worry as he rushed to Claire's side, his concern evident in his eyes. He gently asked if her hand was okay, his voice filled with genuine care. Claire assured him that her hand was fine, but there was a weighty question that hung in the air, waiting to be answered. Kamido, his curiosity burning, couldn't hold back any longer. He inquired about the origin of the frenzy spirit that had threatened to consume her and Scarlet. Just as Claire was about to reveal the truth, a sudden presence materialized before them. Restia Ashdal, the enigmatic figure from Kamido's past, stood there, her presence as haunting as ever. Her appearance sent a shockwave through Kamido, rendering him momentarily speechless. Restia's dark beauty and her mysterious aura had always left a profound impact on him, and now she had returned, seemingly out of nowhere. Restia cast the frenzy spirit into the structure floating above them, her actions shrouded in secrecy and intent. Her words hung in the air like an ominous prophecy as she told Kamito that this was what he wanted. Her departure was as sudden as her arrival, and she soared away, leaving Kamido in a state of shock. The structure, once innocuous, transformed into a colossal menacing monster, and she grabbed Kamido's arm, pulling him away from the impending danger. Amidst the chaos and the relentless pursuit of the monstrous entity, Claire couldn't contain her questions any longer. With worry etched on her face, she asked Kamido who Restia was to him. Kamido, his voice tinged with regret, explained that Restia had been his contract spirit, his constant companion in the past. The weight of guilt and responsibility weighed heavily on him, as he blamed himself for the turmoil and chaos that had unfolded. As they fled to a secure place, the impending battle against the colossal monster looming before them, Kamido knew that the truth about his past, his connection to Restia, and the mysteries surrounding the Academy would have to wait. For now, their immediate concern was survival and protecting those they cared about. Claire decides to kiss Kamido so that he can snap out of it. Of course, it works and they both decide to take on the monster together, since backup from the Academy might take some time to arrive at the arena. Claire distracts the monster, while Kamido lands a final blow to the monster. As Kamido fought the monster, Claire found Ren's Ashbell Blade dance similar to Kamido's fighting style. After the fight, Kamido collapses out of exhaustion, Meanwhile, a strange boy is seen watching from a distance. The following day, Kamido wakes up in a bed alongside his naked contract spirit. Este, Claire meets both of them in that awkward position, but Kamido tries to explain. Meanwhile, Rinslet is seen going to see Kamido. On her way, she meets Ellis, who tries to pretend like she didn't go to visit Kamido. The duo hears the commotion coming from Kamido's room, and they both run to check on him. They meet Claire, threatening Kamido, and the duo joins in. The episode began with a gripping flashback, plunging viewers into a dark and ominous forest where a young girl desperately ran for her life. Her every effort to fend off a relentless demon proved futile. Her techniques barely scratched the surface of the creature's malevolence. As the girl's hope waned, a mysterious figure appeared on the scene like a savior in the night. It was Kamido Kazahaya, who at that time was still in contract with Restia, the shadowy spirit at his side. With a single powerful swing of his sword, Kamido dispatched the demon, obliterating it in one fell swoop. The girl, her breath shaky and her eyes filled with awe, couldn't help but be astonished by the sword wielded by her rescuer. She recognized it as Ren Ashbell's sword, a legendary weapon known throughout the realm. The girl, curiosity piqued, couldn't contain her surprise, and asked why Kamido was dressed in such a peculiar manner. To her astonishment, Kamido revealed his secret. He was, in fact, Ren Ashbell, the renowned blade dancer who had captured the hearts of many. But there was a twist. Kamido cross-dressed as a girl whenever he stepped into the arena. Kamido sees that she has lost her footwear, so he decides to carry her out of the forest. As they made their way out of the ominous woods, the girl couldn't help but be intrigued. She asked Kamito about his motivations for cross-dressing as a girl to fight. Kamito, with a hint of melancholy, explained that it was all in pursuit of a wish, a wish that he hoped would come true through his battles. Their journey through the forest came to an end as they finally emerged into the daylight. The girl, with a determined look in her eyes, made Kamito promise that he would meet her again after his fight. Back to the present day, the girl is seen coming into the academy inside a carriage. Kamito finally awakes. It's been one week since the incident, so he decides that he has had enough rest. He rises with his hand stretched forward and he accidentally squeezes Est's chest. He removes his hand out of embarrassment so Est kisses him because she says it is right so that their bond can be stronger. She proceeds to kiss him again and Claire comes into the room with a towel wrapped around her chest. Claire misinterprets the situation and Kamido tries to explain but to no avail. Claire stands over Kamido and threatens him. Kamido reminds her that he can see some part of her under the towel. This embarrasses Claire, and she decides to take it out on Kamido by summoning Scarlet to deal with him. Later that day, the Academy is holding a class exercise in preparation for the famous blade dance. Unfortunately, only Kamido and Claire end up being in one team instead of five people so the coordinator gives them a few days to look for more teammates. Claire boasts that they are more than enough to win the challenge. When the challenge begins, Claire and Kamido are easily defeated after the first round because of the good teamwork of the other team. During lunch, 
Rinslet, and her maid, Carol, join them for lunch. Carol reveals that a new student will be enrolling into the academy, and she appears to be from a noble family. Carol mentions that she is a Holy Spirit user. Kamido sees the girl as a potential teammate for their team. During their discussion, Carol whispers to Kamido that Rinslet is interested in joining their team because her previous teammates quit. After all, she had extremely high expectations of her teammates. Kamido then whispers to Claire about Rinslet's apparent interest in joining her team. After refusing initially, she decides to tell Rinslet to join their team. Rinslet shocks them and tells them that they should join her team instead. This causes an argument between the two parties. Their argument is abruptly interrupted by the authoritative presence of Ellis Farengart. She calls them to attention, her tone commanding respect and discipline. Ellis, known for her exceptional grades and her position as the leader of a high-ranking team, extends an enticing offer to Kamido. She requests that he join her elite team, a proposition that has the potential to significantly elevate his status within the academy. Ellis's team is renowned for its achievements, and the allure of such a partnership is undeniable. However, before Kamido can respond, a sudden burst of energy and determination surges through the crowd. Claire Rouge, with unwavering resolve, rushes forward, her hand firmly clutching Kamido's shirt. In a defiant voice, she declares to Ellis that Kamito is her contract spirit, her protector, and her partner in the blade dance. Kamido, caught in the middle of this unexpected confrontation, feels torn between the tempting offer presented by Ellis and his loyalty to Claire. Ultimately, he makes his decision. With a gentle but firm tone, he turns down Ellis's offer and chooses to stay by Claire's side. As Ellis reluctantly retreats, her disappointment evident, she leaves Kamido with a final piece of information. She informs him that Greyworth Seal May, the headmaster of the academy, wishes to see him. With that, she departs, leaving Kamido to contemplate the upcoming meeting. Later on, Kamido makes his way to Greyworth's office, unsure of what to expect. Greyworth, known for her capricious nature, initially engages in playful banter with Kamido. However, she eventually gets down to the heart of the matter. Greyworth introduces Kamito to the new transfer student, a figure of significant importance. The girl with an air of regality is revealed to be Princess Fiona Ray Ordesia, the second princess of the Kingdom of Ordesia. Greyworth's revelation leaves Kamito stunned. It is then that she unveils Kamito's new assignment, to serve as Princess Fiona's bodyguard. The responsibility and implications of this role are significant, and Kamito can't help but wonder about the challenges and adventures that await him as a guardian of royalty. Amidst the backdrop of a mining operation hampered by high-level seals at the entrance, a boy named Gio Inzaghi and an enigmatic lady engage in a discussion. Their focus appears to differ as Gio seems disinterested in the mining endeavor, driven instead by his desire to become the next successor to the Demon Lord. Meanwhile, the scene shifts to Kamido, who kneels before Princess Fiona Ray Ordizia. He offers a sincere apology for his earlier disregard in addressing her properly, but has recently been plagued by mysterious earthquakes. There are concerns that these tremors may be attributed to strategic military spirits. A young lady enters the office, taking over the explanation. She elaborates on the perilous situation, revealing that these potentially world-destroying spirits have been sealed within the town's mines. It is now suspected that the seals may be weakening, leading to the earthquakes. To counter this threat, Princess Fiona will perform a spirit dancing ritual to strengthen the seals, with Kamido serving as her protector. After the comprehensive briefing, Kamido expresses his hesitation to make this decision unilaterally, emphasizing that he must consult Claire before committing to such a pivotal mission. As they exit the office, the young lady turns to Greyworth, curious about her silence regarding Princess Fiona's questionable actions during the entrance exam. Greyworth calmly explains her perspective. If Princess Fiona awakens as an elementalist, it won't affect them, and if she doesn't, it still won't impact their plans. It becomes evident that Greyworth's motives are far more complex than they initially appear, shrouded in layers of intrigue and hidden agendas. As Kamito and Princess Fiona discuss their upcoming mission, Kamido seizes the moment to inquire about Princess Fiona's decision to choose him as her guardian. He wants to know if she was coerced, or if it was a choice born of her own will. In response, Fiona candidly explains that she selected him willingly, considering it a great honor to travel alongside the only male elementalist. Her words carry a sense of sincerity and trust. However, their intimate conversation doesn't go unnoticed. A group of female students nearby begins to gossip, speculating about Kamido and Fiona's relationship. Sensing an opportunity to tease Kamido and provoke a reaction, Fiona daringly presses her chest against him, subtly attempting to seduce him. Their close encounter doesn't go unnoticed by a cafeteria where Kamido, Fiona, and Claire sit down to enjoy a meal. They engage in a lighthearted discussion about managing the limited space within Claire's room. Amidst the banter, Claire unexpectedly drops a bombshell. She reveals that she has kissed Kamido. This revelation catches both Kamido and Fiona off guard. Fiona, seemingly challenged by Claire's audacity, decides to settle the matter with a cooking duel. The stakes are high, 
the winner gets to keep Kamido by their side. The cooking duel commences, and Fiona's culinary prowess shines brilliantly. She demonstrates her skills with grace and finesse, ultimately emerging as the victor with a flawless performance. As night falls over Aratia Spirit Academy, Geo successfully infiltrates the Academy's library, his intentions shrouded in mystery and intrigue. Meanwhile, Kamido, unaware of the unfolding events, is taking a bath in the privacy of his quarters. However, his solitude is short-lived as Princess Fiona, determined to pursue her seductive tactics, enters the room. She attempts to allure him, but Kamido steadfastly resists her advances. Their heated disagreement generates noise, alerting Claire to the commotion. Concerned for Kamido's well-being, she rushes to check on them. To Claire's astonishment, she finds Kamido and Fiana in a compromising position. Quick on her feet, Fiana concocts a deceptive explanation, suggesting that she was merely helping Kamido scrub his back. Claire, convinced by Fiona's story, decides to join in, adding to the already bewildering situation. With an unusual bathing experience behind them, the trio is interrupted when Est appears, delivering crucial news about an intruder, Geo. They hastily dress and prepare to confront the trespasser. Outside, they discover a scene of chaos. Several girls are injured, and Ellis Ferengart is barely standing. She explains that Geo possesses not just two but multiple contract spirits, a fact that has made him a formidable adversary. Ellis reveals that the intruder's primary objective is a certain crystal he is holding. Chasing after Geo, they quickly realize that he is a skilled and elusive opponent who manages to evade their every attempt to apprehend him. Only Kamido can keep up with Geo, engaging in a fierce battle of wits and elemental spirits. During their confrontation, Kamido becomes aware of the shocking truth. Geo claims to possess not just two but a staggering 72 spirits, the same number as the legendary demon lord himself. Amidst the battle, the sealed document that Geo seeks to acquire splits into two pieces. Fiana and Kamido attempt to distract Geo. But there, despite his bravery, the attack manages to slice through Kamido's shoulder, inflicting a painful injury. This unforeseen turn of events creates an opening for Geo, who exploits the opportunity to escape. We see Fiana experiencing a vivid dream. In her dream, she finds herself in a fierce battle with a heavily armored spirit. The clash is intense and filled with tension. As the battle rages on, Fiana is abruptly jolted awake from her dream. As Fiana awakens, Kamito, who has entered her room to check on her well-being, inquires about her dream and whether she's feeling all right. Assured that she's okay, Fiana becomes curious about Kamito's intention to discuss something serious. However, their private moment is interrupted by the arrival of Claire. Claire, ever quick to express her displeasure at the situation, presents Kamido with a choice, face her fiery roasting, or deal with her smoldering anger. In a spontaneous and daring move, Kamido swiftly takes action. He scoops Fiana into his arms and makes a hasty exit through the window, leaving Claire behind in bewilderment. Meanwhile, Rinslet and her loyal maid Carol take a stroll through the academy grounds. Rinslet suggests they head to the cafeteria for lunch. As they discuss their plans, their attention is drawn to an unexpected sight, Fiana and Kamito walking together, alone. Intrigued by the peculiar scene, Rinslet and Carol decide to follow them discreetly. Along the way, Claire encounters them, and Rinslet doesn't miss the chance to inform her about Fiona and Kamido heading into the forest. Before parting ways, Claire can't help but express her concern about her physique, particularly her chest size. Rinslet, with a hint of amusement, reassures Claire that her size is perfectly fine and that some boys prefer it that way. She teases Claire by hinting at a secret method to make her chest appear larger, adding a touch of mischievous humor to the conversation. As Fiana and Kamito venture deeper into the forest, Kamito seizes the moment to ask Fiana how she discovered his true identity. Fiana hesitates momentarily before revealing a surprising revelation. She is the same girl Kamito saved in the Astral Forest three years ago. Her return to the Academy was driven by a desire to join the same team as Kamito and participate in the Blade Dance all in a bid to reclaim her honor as a princess. In the aftermath of Rinslet's playful teasing, Claire is left utterly shocked by her suggestion that allowing a guy she likes to rub her chest would make it bigger. Claire's scream of astonishment echoes through the area, drawing attention from anyone nearby who happens to hear. Meanwhile, Ellis Ferengart encounters Fiona and Kamido beside a tranquil river. Her arrival is marked by jealousy and suspicion, as she immediately points her sword at Kamido, accusing him of harboring romantic feelings for Fiona. Fiona, perhaps unintentionally, exacerbates the situation by getting closer to Kamido and rubbing her chest against him, adding fuel to the fiery accusation. Tensions run high, but Ellis's loyal followers quickly step in to calm her down. Kamido, ever the peacemaker, inquires about their destination. Ellis reveals that, in her role as the Head of the Knights, her mission is to recover the sealed document that Geo stole the previous night. Kamido, displaying his willingness to help, offers to accompany them on their quest. However, Ellis firmly declines his offer, emphasizing that this mission is an opportunity for the knights to restore their honor. He graciously wishes her well as they part ways. 
The scene transitions to Claire, deep in thought about Fiona's earlier remark. Lost in her contemplation, she decides to experiment with the idea Rinslet mentioned. Claire awkwardly attempts to rub her chest herself, unaware that Kimito has caught her in this embarrassing act. Claire's face turns crimson with embarrassment as Kimito walks away, leaving her to grapple with her thoughts and emotions. The following day, Kimito prepares to go to the mining village with Fiona. Claire and Rinslet join them in the quest. Later that night, they arrive at the village, and as they continue to survey, they encounter a damaged shrine, which Fiona confirms that an unbinding ritual has been performed. At that moment, a loud sound is heard, and they rush towards there and meet Ellis fighting Geo. They all join in the battle. Kamido uses his sword Est to break several of Geo's spirit swords, which has Kamido wondering how many contract spirits he has. Geo explains that he wants to defeat Kamido at his peak to prove that he is a worthy successor. During the battle, Kamido's divine power finishes and his sword reverts to a smaller version. Geo explains that he is now weak and proceeds to demonstrate why he launches an attack against the girls which makes Kamito jump in to defend them. Amidst the chaos, Fiana rushed to Kamido's side, genuine concern etched on her face. Kamido, battered and worn from their recent battle, lay on the ground. Nearby, Gio, another team member, berated Kamido, accusing him of weakness for always trying to protect their friends. Kamido winced at Gio's taunts, struggling to rise. Gio's words continued to cut deep, exploiting Kamido's desire to safeguard his friends. The verbal assault didn't stop at Kamido. Gio turned his scorn toward Fiana, stoking her anger. Fueled by rage, Fiana summoned her contract spirit, a manifestation of her strength and determination. Without hesitation, she directed her spirit's power at Gio, launching a devastating attack that sent him flying into a nearby tree, which shattered upon impact. As Kamido slowly got to his feet, he found that Gio had vanished. He asked Fiana what kind of contract spirit that was. Fiana sighed and confessed that it was a high-level contract spirit stored in a blood crystal. She used it during during the entrance exam to get closer to Kamido and secure victory in the blade dance. Fiana asks for forgiveness for lying all along. They forgave Fiana for her earlier deceptions and reaffirmed her place on the team. Gratitude filled Fiana's eyes as she accepted Kamido's hand. Their bonds, now stronger after acknowledging their differences, propelled them forward to face the challenges ahead in the blade dance. Amidst another tremor, Kamido swiftly deduces the source. The military contract spirits are causing these quakes. To counteract them, they must locate the real shrine where Fiona can perform her crucial dancing ritual. Est steps forward. She knows the exact location of the authentic shrine, having been there numerous times before her confinement. Ellis, still paralyzed from poison, stays behind with Rinslet to ensure their safety. With Est's guidance, Kamido, Fiona, Claire, and Est embark on their journey towards the genuine shrine. Tension hangs heavy in the air as they venture into the unknown. Unbeknownst to them, Restia senses their destination. She contacts Geo and reveals a startling truth. He isn't the true Demon Lord. That title belongs to Kamido. Geo's anger flares and he rushes to catch up with them. Meanwhile, Kamido's group finally reaches the shrine. Before Fiona can begin her crucial ritual, purification is essential. She needs to cleanse herself by bathing in the special waters within the shrine. Claire accompanies Fiona in this sacred process while Est and Kamido stand guard outside. Geo attacks and a great battle unfolds between these two. Amid fierce combat, Kamido unveils a startling revelation to Geo. He is no demon lord. The spirits that surround him are not in contract but sealed within him. This revelation infuriates Geo, who reaches for a mysterious bloodstone determined to prove his power. Before Geo can unleash the bloodstone's potential, Claire intervenes, her eyes reflecting concern for Geo's well-being. Meanwhile, Fiona initiates a ritual, her movements imbued with grace and mysticism. The spirits sealed within Geo respond to her dance, causing excruciating pain to course through him. The battlefield brims with charged energy, forcing Geo to his knees in surrender. In the darkest hour of his defeat, Restia, the enigmatic dark spirit, appears, shocking Kamito with her presence. Geo, desperate to assert his claim as the true demon lord, implores Restia to become his weapon. She reluctantly agrees, hoping this drastic act will awaken Kamito's true potential. With Restia's power at his command, Geo launches a sudden assault on Fiona, but Kamito leaps to her defense showcasing his innate protective instincts. This selfless act vexes Fiona, who summons her contract spirit, Georgios. Together with Kamido and Claire, they engage in a fierce battle against Geo. The next morning, as the sun rises on a new day, Kamido awakens to find Fiona by his side. She reveals her intention to transfer spirit power through direct contact, but their intimate moment is abruptly interrupted when Claire stumbles upon them, setting off a comical chain of events that fills the air with tension and awkwardness. We see a poignant flashback, delving into Ellis's past. In the flashback, a young Ellis stands in the arena, her eyes filled with admiration, watching her sister engage in an epic battle against none other than the legendary Ren Ashbell. Despite her sister's valiant efforts, the battle ends in a heartbreaking defeat. Cutting back to the present day, Kamido awakens from his slumber, 
uttering a sigh of relief that, for once, no one has joined him in bed without his consent. In the room adjacent, Claire and Fiona, amidst a rather spirited argument, passionately debate over whose culinary creation will capture Kamido's heart. Amid their lively exchange, Kamido, now awake and intrigued by the early morning commotion, interjects with curiosity. The duo explains their early morning venture, preparing delectable chocolates for Kamido, in anticipation of the forthcoming Valentina celebration. This annual festival of love sees them exchange heartfelt gifts. Suddenly, an unexpected twist unfolds as Est materializes from behind Kamido. Her figure is adorned with chocolate smudges, and she mischievously beckons Kamido himself to the sweet treat. In this suggestive moment, the atmosphere becomes charged with anticipation. However, the tranquility is abruptly shattered as Ellis storms into the room, her expression a mix of shock and disgust. She wastes no time, summons her formidable contract spirit, and attacks Kamido. Freya, one of Greyworth's trusted confidants, is reporting to the headmistress about Kamido's team's progress. Her tone is cautious as she mentions that Kamito's team has struggled to gather a full complement of five members. This issue raises questions about Kamito's true identity and intentions. Greyworth, however, dismisses Freya's concerns, urging her not to dwell on the matter. Freya proceeds with her report, revealing that Velsaria, the Academy's strongest elemental, will soon return from her mission. The news of Velsaria's impending return adds a layer of intrigue to the situation. In addition to the team's struggles, Freya informs Greyworth about a growing menace, the Merchants of Death. These shadowy figures have been attempting to sell cursed seals to the Academy's students, posing a significant threat to the safety of the Elementals. The scene then shifts to Kamido's team engaged in a spirited sparring match against another group. Their determination and synchronized movements pay off as Kamido's team emerges victorious, flawlessly executing their strategies. Their triumph showcases their growth and unity as they continue to train and face the challenges that lie ahead. After the victorious exercise, Claire can't help but gloat attributing their win to her excellent leadership skills. Kamido, the pragmatic strategist, informs the team that their next challenge will be Ellis's team. However, complications arise as two members of Ellis's team are injured, forcing them to face higher-ranked opponents, including the formidable Velsaria. Claire, still basking in the glory of their recent victory, suggests they celebrate. Just as they start making plans, the joyous atmosphere takes a sour turn. Two girls, driven by spite, begin mocking Claire, reminding her of her sister's perceived betrayal. Claire bristles with anger, ready to defend her honor, but Kamido intervenes, preventing a potentially damaging confrontation. Dueling in the academy outside of sanctioned battles could lead to disqualification. Just when the tension is palpable, Rinslet, the elegant and assertive upperclassman, appears from behind. She confronts the two girls, asserting herself with a veiled threat that sends them fleeing in embarrassment. With the troublemakers gone, Rinslet extends a gracious offer to celebrate with the team at a fancy restaurant generously offering to cover all expenses. Claire and Fiona initially decline, but Carol, the voice of reason, points out that Rinslet simply wants to join in the celebration. Claire, with a begrudging nod, accepts the offer. However, the logistics of the celebration take a minor twist. Kamido reveals that he has a supplementary class, making him unavailable at the originally specified time. In response, they adjusted the plan to accommodate his schedule. The scene shifts to Ellis, who finds herself in the supplementary class, diligently trying to memorize a daunting textbook. Amidst her focused concentration, Kamido's unexpected appearance startles her, prompting a reflexive response as she raises her sword defensively. Realizing her abrupt reaction, she quickly lowers her weapon and apologizes for her rash behavior. Ellis opens up to Kamido about her recent struggles, admitting that she failed the class due to her demanding night duties. Her sense of duty and commitment to her responsibilities have left her with limited time for academic pursuits. She also offers an apology for her earlier attack. Kamido, the patient mentor, notices Ellis's determination as she attempts to memorize the textbook. He decides to lend a helping hand by offering her valuable lessons on effective reading techniques. Ellis, eager to learn, asks for further guidance, to which Kamido gladly agrees. After the supplementary class, Kamido reunites with the rest of the team for their long-awaited celebration. As they make their way to the chosen restaurant, Kamido observes Claire's lingering gaze fixated on a necklace, piquing his curiosity. He gently inquires about her interest, but Claire denies any connection and moves ahead, her secret guarded. Finally, the team settles down at the restaurant and Est, with her voracious appetite, orders a bit of everything on the menu. After their celebratory dinner, Ellis and Kamido meet by a tranquil fountain for the private lesson Kamido had promised earlier. However, Ellis surprises Kamido by suggesting they move the lesson to her room. Intrigued and agreeable, Kamido follows her there. Once inside, Ellis hastily changes into a maid's uniform, explaining that her actions are a way of repaying Kamido for his help during the Geo incident. She proceeds to prepare a meal for Kamido, standing attentively by his side as he eats, 
occasionally feeding him herself. Their meal concludes, and Ellis leads Kamido outside to a long bench. There, she confides in him, revealing that today's events would have been impossible if her roommate weren't away. Her roommate, as she discloses, is none other than Velsaria, the Academy's top-ranked elementalist. Ellis makes a proposition to Kamido, asking if he would consider joining the Knights. The offer comes with a promise of payment. Without hesitation, Kamido agrees and even requests an advance payment. When Kamido returns home, he encounters Claire, who is visibly irritated by his late arrival. Kamido explains the reason for his tardiness, sharing that he had been at Ellis's house, where she had cooked for him. Claire's jealousy and frustration get the better of her, and she impulsively throws Kamido out of the house in a fit of anger. Claire's impulsive anger leads her to throw Kamido out of the house, but the weight of her actions quickly settles in. She collapses onto her bed, consumed by regret and longing. The next morning, Kamido awakens outside, Est at his side. She had followed him and kept him warm through the night, demonstrating her unwavering loyalty. Est makes Kamido promise that he won't leave her side again, forging a deeper connection between them. At the night's meeting, Ellis issues orders for the knights to monitor the city and prevent any illegal dealings among the students. She introduces Kamido as the newest member of their ranks. However, the meeting takes a sudden turn when Velsaria bursts into the auditorium, forcefully reclaiming her leadership role. She attempts to win Kamido over to her side, but he resolutely refuses her advances. Later that day, Kamido and Ellis share a quiet lunch. Meanwhile, the other girls, admiring Kamido and Est, watch from a distance. During the meal, Est suddenly transforms back into her sword form. Kamido is alarmed and decides to follow her, guided by the mysterious presence of Scarlet. Following the trail, Kamido finds Claire, who expresses regret for her actions the previous day. She surprises him by requesting a date. However, their moment is interrupted by Ellis's arrival, causing Claire to flee in tears. Meanwhile, Vivian is seen attempting to sell illegal contract spirits to unsuspecting students, introducing a dangerous element into the academy. In a separate development, Velsaria experiences chest pains, hinting at potential turmoil and challenges to come. Then Claire wandering into the forest alone, her thoughts troubled. She's soon intercepted by Vivian, who approaches with an offer to sell her a contract spirit. Claire, caught up in her concerns, hesitates as she contemplates the proposition. Meanwhile, Ellis and Kamido continue their survey of the forest together. As they walk, Ellis unintentionally drops a comment, suggesting that their outing resembles a date. Blushing at her own words, she tries to pick up the pace, but ends up bumping into various people along the way. Kamido, quick to react, extends his hand to steady her, preventing her from falling. Ellis is taken aback by this gesture, as it marks the first time a boy has ever held her hand. Her cheeks flush with embarrassment. As they continue on their path, Ellis's attention is drawn to an elegant dress on display. Kamido notices her admiration and tells her that the dress would indeed suit her perfectly. Their exchange adds a layer of warmth and connection to their time together. In the forest, Claire finds herself ensnared in a giant cobweb conjured by Vivian. Vivian persists in her efforts to tempt Claire into accepting the contract spirit offer, her words laced with persuasive intent. However, Claire manages to snap out of the enchantment and swiftly destroys the cobweb. To her surprise, two of her classmates appear seemingly out of nowhere, having purchased the contract spirit from Vivian. One of them summons a colossal contract spirit, setting the stage for a potentially explosive encounter. Meanwhile, Kamito and Ellis exit the jewelry store. Kamito mentions that he had requested an advance payment so that he could purchase the necklace Claire had been admiring earlier, planning to give it to her for her upcoming birthday. However, he confides in Ellis that a recent argument between them might have soured their relationship. Ellis reassures Kamito, explaining that Claire doesn't hate him, especially since she had gone to the effort of making him chocolate. Their conversation is abruptly interrupted by a deafening noise that echoes through the area. Kamito and Ellis rush to investigate and stumble upon the source, a massive contract spirit wreaking havoc. A fierce battle ensues, with Kamido putting his life on the line to protect a young girl from the spirit's attack. In the process, Kamido sustains injuries. Claire eventually joins the fray, but the situation takes a drastic turn when Velsaria arrives and swiftly obliterates the gigantic contract spirit with a single, devastating attack. Her actions, however, show a complete disregard for the safety of nearby citizens, infuriating Kamito. He confronts Velsaria about her reckless actions, but she responds with overwhelming force, leaving Kamido at a disadvantage. Kamido awakens in his room and decides to savor the chocolate that Claire had crafted for him as a gesture of reconciliation. Just as he's about to indulge, Claire enters the room, creating a moment of vulnerability. Kamado presents her with the necklace he had bought for her birthday, a heartfelt gesture that melts Claire's heart. In a touching exchange, she forgives Kamado, and their bond deepens. As the day progresses, Fianna arrives with significant news. They are to face Velsaria's formidable team in battle. In response to the upcoming challenge, Rinslet joins the team. 
lending her strength and skills to the cause. Later, Ellis joins the group, stepping in to fill the gaps left by her injured teammates. In the quiet of the night, with a backdrop of starlit skies, Ellis approaches Kamato, offering him a thoughtful gift. Above them, Restia silently observes their interaction, the weight of their connection lingering in the air. The exchange of gifts symbolizes the ever-evolving relationships among the elementals, each gift representing a bridge of understanding and affection. As they prepare to face Velsaria's formidable team, the Elementalists must draw upon their newfound unity, strength, and trust to confront the challenges ahead. On the day of the battle, excitement fills the air in the arena as the girls make sounds of joy and cheers. While all this goes on, Kamido's team talks about how skilled the members of Velsaria's team are. Kamido reveals that Velsaria only chooses them to fill her team to the required number in order to participate, and he suspects that she has no intention of allowing them to fight alongside her. Velsaria expresses her disappointment in Ellis choosing to fight against her. Ellis tells Velsaria that she plans to prove to her her determination and chivalry. Velsaria swears to break her chivalry in the match. The huge bells ring which signals the beginning of the battle between Velsaria's team and Kamido's team. They are in turn transported to the battleground. The girls appear in a large field except Kamido. Claire and Ellis agree to be in the battlefront while Fiona and Rinslet take defense. While planning all these, Velsaria's voice echoes from behind, telling them not to bother themselves. Then she appears in an enormous armor alone. She tells them that she doesn't need the others to fight alongside her because they will only slow her down. Velsaria launches numerous attacks from her cannons at them. When the dust clears, the girls are unharmed thanks to Rinslet, who used her ice arrows to evade Velsaria's attack. Rinslet tells Velsaria that she is confident in the speed of her elemental waffle, so Rinslet proceeds to fire more arrows at strategic points of Velsaria's armor. Velsaria boasts that Rinslet's feeble arrows have no effect on her armor, but unfortunately, that wasn't Rinslet's plan. Her ice arrows begin to expand until most of Velsaria's armor is immobilized by the ice. Claire launches a fireball at Velsaria while Ellis uses her wind to magnify the effect of Claire's attack on Velsaria. When the dust clears, Velsaria is unharmed. She uses the armor to move quickly towards the girls. Fiana quickly summons Georgios to protect them. Velsaria is surprised to see the infamous Lost Queen, Princess Fiana, fight against her. While Velsaria is distracted by this, Claire uses her flame whiplash to launch another attack, and Ellis helps her magnify the power using her wind. Unfortunately, Velsaria is unharmed again by this attack, and she begins to launch several attacks at the girls using her powerful cannons. She seems stronger than before, because the girl's attack no longer has any effect on her. The audience watches from a large magical screen in the sky. Est says that a large contract spirit like Velsaria's own should consume a lot of divine power but she just seems to get stronger and stronger with every attack, which is odd. Kamido notices that she is stronger than when he fought her three years ago in the Blade Dance. Back on the battleground, Fiona's contract spirit, Georgios, is already at its limit. Ellis is already at the verge of giving up, when Claire reminds her of the promise she made to her injured teammates and the one she made to Velsaria to prove to her that she is a worthy warrior. This fires up Ellis. Velsaria destroys Georgios, so Ellis and Claire decide to try another combo attack on Velsaria again. Claire unleashes Scarlet to distract Velsaria from them, while she finds her way to Velsaria's armor leg and begins to heat it up with her flame. Velsaria tells that her fire has no effect on her. Rinslet fires an ice arrows at the leg to quickly cool it. The sudden expansion and contraction caused by Claire and Rinslet attacks cracks the armor and Ellis delivers the final blow by using her powerful wind to destroy the weak armor and finally Velsaria falls to the ground. Velsaria manages to stand up again, then a dark energy engulfs her armor and begins to take control. Est explains that it is a cursed seal and she wonders why Velsaria, the best elementalist in the academy, is using one. The girls run towards Velsaria to check on her, but Velsaria smacks them away. Freya advises Greyworth to stop the competition because it is going too far, but she refuses. Meanwhile, we see Restia watching the all battle from the top of a tree. The dark energy flowing from Velsaria grabs the girls, except Ellis, and it begins to absorb their divine power. Kamido sees the danger the girls are in, and he decides to help them despite his injuries. Est warns him that he won't be able to maintain her form as a sword for long. S transforms into a sword, and they are both transported to the battlefield. Meanwhile, Ellis tries to attack Velsaria, but immediately she gets close to her. She couldn't produce any more wind. The cursed seal in Velsaria grabs Ellis and proceeds to punch her. Fortunately, before she could succeed, Kamito arrives in time and swiftly cuts Velsaria's armor arm away, and he rescues the girls from the cursed seal absorbing their divine power. Kamito praises Ellie for holding out for so long, just in time for him to arrive. Claire yells at him for coming to the battlefield. Despite his wounds, Kamido makes her understand that it is common sense to help your teammates when in danger. Without wasting time, Kamido rushes towards Velsaria with amazing speed and begins to launch attacks from every angle while Restia continues watching. 
After a while, his sword begins to glow, which indicates that his divine power is getting low, and he won't be able to maintain its form again. The girls notice how weak Kamido is, and Claire tries to stop him, but Fianna stops her, and uses her healing magic to heal Kamido, and give him some divine power. After doing this, Fianna loses strength and falls to the ground. Velsaria regenerates her lost limb, and Kamido swiftly moves towards her to attack her. Rinslet shoots her ice arrows at Velsaria to freeze her arms. Claire distracts her with her flames, while Ellis uses her wind to boost Kamido's speed towards her. With a giant leap, Kamado stabs Velsaria's armor in the chest, and he promises to save her. Restia chuckles out of excitement while watching, and she mentions that any time Kamado wins a battle, he gets closer to her. Velsaria is free from the cursed seal, and she falls to the ground, bowing her head in defeat. Kamido explains that she didn't lose to just him, but also to his teammates, laying emphasis on the importance of teamwork. Vivian, who implanted the cursed seal on Velsaria, has also been watching the match. She expresses her disappointment in Velsaria losing because Vivian reveals that Velsaria would have made a fine specimen for her experiment so she decides to use Kamido next time. While leaving, Greyworth stops her and mentions that she knows it was Vivian that implanted the cursed seal on her students. Greyworth uses her contract spirit to destroy Vivian. After the whole battle, Kamido's team was chosen to represent the school in the Blade Dance alongside two other teams. The girls try to seduce Kamido to eat their cakes. During this, Ellis enters with a pretty dress, and a flashback scene is shown where Velsaria entrusts Ellis to Kamido before she is taken for treatment outside the city. Kamido consoles Ellis that Velsaria will be fine in no time. Back to the present day, Kamido compliments Ellis's dress before the girls start forcing Kamido to try their cakes. On the day of the blade dance, Claire tries to tell Kamido something, but Kamido is distracted by the large beam of light that shone on them. So Claire says it in her mind, how grateful she is to have met Kamido and the others. After this, they are transported to the arena for the blade dance. At this point, we have reached the end of our video. If you like it, do not forget to put the like button and subscribe for more new videos.